Hey guys, and welcome to Taylor Tech. So today we're finally going to be racking this stuff out and getting it off the floor. Um, since I've had these guys, they've kind of been sitting on the floor over here next to uh, my, my main PC uh, and next to my Freenax box, which is also on the floor. And it's become like a tangled mess of spaghetti over there. And it, it just, I can't handle it, especially with kids running around the house. So we're finally gonna take it all, we're gonna put it in a rack. So the rack that I got is an APC Net Shelter 3100. It's a really nice rack. This one looks like it's been thrown down a set of stairs though. Uh, I picked it up for 50 bucks on Craigslist. The uh, the double doors on the back, one of them is actually like, kind of like partially broken and they were so bent that they wouldn't close when I bought it. Um, one of the lower frame pieces was also a little bit bent, but I was able to hammer it back into shape. Um, eventually I did get the back doors in good enough shape that I, it was usable, but um, I was actually worried there for a little bit that I wasn't going to be able to get them up there. So let's go ahead and uh, go over some of the stuff that I've got here to help me get this racked out. Um, first on the Cisco switch, um, it actually came with all the gear to rack it, which is really nice because um, these rails right here are freaking hen's teeth. If you don't have them for your full size, full depth Cisco switch, you're probably not going to find them. Um, even if you like are willing to spend money on eBay, sometimes they're just not there. So um, got really lucky with that. Got the little rails on the sides and the ears on the front. It's all we need to set this guy up. For the Dell server, uh, we've got Dell ready rails, which we'll go over how to set these up inside the rack. Um, they're actually pretty simple to use once you know what you're supposed to do with them. Um, they, they're, but uh, if you've never used them before, they can be a little bit confusing the first time. Uh, in addition, I got some upgrades for the server itself. Uh, I've got the rear handle that came with it that I just never put on when I first got the server. I've got a front cover, front bezel cover, so that kids stop playing with buttons. Uh, we've got an iDRAC 6 Enterprise that we can use to connect remotely to the server. So this is going to be really important since it's going to be on the other side of the basement from us. Uh, I want to have a way to connect to it without having to drag a monitor and a keyboard over there. And finally, we've got the memories. So. 16 gigs has been feeling kind of thin in terms of memory. Uh, so I picked up another eight gigs uh, for on the cheap so that I can have 24 gigs, which should be plenty for all the virtualization stuff that I'm gonna do with this box. So, um, oh, and the last thing is for the Freenas, which is in a standard PC tower case, I actually have this guy which is a steel shelf that I got that adjusts between 28 and 32 inches, which is perfect for the 29 and a half or so inches depth that I've got the rail set for. And yeah, we're ready to go. Before we go throwing things in the rack and talking about racking stuff out, let's go ahead and get the upgrades done on this guy. So I'm gonna pull it over here to the center of the table uh, and we'll get started on doing the upgrades. So let's just clear all the rest of this stuff off and get going. So let's start with uh, the memory upgrade, which is probably gonna be the easiest thing of all. Let's get that lid off. And then uh, underneath. So you start with the outermost channel, working to the innermost channel. And then uh, in each channel, you have to fill from the first bank out to the third bank. So we already have channels one and two with two banks filled. So we're gonna do the same thing on channel three, put two banks of memory in each for each CPU. So let's go ahead and open the memory tabs. Oops, I don't need you open. And we'll start putting in DIMMs. Real simple process. Oops, not you, you. Don't get yourself confused. Remember, we're outside to the inside. So we're gonna load. There, push down until she clicks. We'll load the second one. Go this way. Make sure you check your orientation for the little tabby in the RAM module so that you don't try and cram it in in a direction it doesn't want to go. That never works out well. Um, in terms of when you're selecting your memory, just make sure that you have the same rank density if it's single rank or dual rank. Um, and uh, make sure it's the same speed. Everything in these guys should be uh, 10600, so you shouldn't be using any faster RAM um, it's not going to really like that. So, next thing we're going to do is do the, uh, the iDRAC 6 Enterprise 
and the rear bar kind of here at the same time because basically we have to take everything out back here to get to the spots that we need to put some screws in. So we'll start by taking out our 10 gig nicks. Owie. Okay, there we go. And that riser. Okay, no. This guy is kind of a pain in the butt. I, they didn't use the, uh, the right angle um, SAS cables, so they don't pull straight out. How did I get this out last time? I have this bad memory of flexing things in ways that they probably shouldn't have been flexed. Hmm. Release. Okay, I see. Yep, that's what I did. Okay, I'm remembering what I did now. Again, this is not ideal, but because of the way that they put these guys in here, you can see they didn't use the nice right angle short connectors. They used the long ones, and then they didn't actually put it in the proper slot. They put it in one of the other slots. All right, here we go. So we can pull that guy out of the way. Let's actually pull you all the way out so you're not impeding us. All right, so we can see down here where the eye drag goes. That's this little guy right here. Simply slot him into place. See, he lines up with his holes. Push on the blue spot. Uh, hold on. Hold, please. These are crooked. Twist those back into shape and blow the dust bunnies out of the way. Rotate. There we go. Thank you, sir. All right. Slot in. Line up the holes. And clunk. There we go. Next, we're gonna put the handle on in the back here so that we can get a better grip on this guy. Let's see. Two screws. Uh, funny story that, these are not actually screws. These are, these are torques. Huh, go figure. That's not the right size. What size is that? It's a 15. That looks like a 30. That is huge. All right, so this guy is gonna go Right here, there's actually a round hole. There's actually a round hole here in the back venting. I'll see if I can get a shot of it later. Um, that the one screw goes through. You'll notice that it's a different length here. So the short end goes towards, or the long end goes towards the power supplies. The short end goes the other direction. There you go. Okay. Let's try a 30. No, let's try 25. Yep, 25s. Here we go. Now we have a strong handle at the back of the server that will help us when we're setting it in the ready rails. So all of our new stuff is in. All that's left is to reassemble. Actually, it's time to fix my janky cover poking up in the corner. All right, so let's take a quick look at the ready rails before we go over to the rack. So this is the right side rail, meaning that this goes on this side of the server. It's as you're standing at the front of the server. Um, and the way these guys work is they have an automatic latching system where you simply pull it into the, your round or square hole uh, rails or rack rails on the front. And then in the back, it's loose and you just slide it until it clicks. Uh, and once it is latched in, you can pull out the inner rail. The inner rail does not actually separate all the way. It just pulls open so that all of these holes are exposed and you can set the server down into the rack rails while the rack rails are in the, in the rack. Once they're in, there's a blue tab on this side. You can push to release the inner rail and let it slide shut. It's locked until you do that though. That way it's stable while you're setting that heavy server down in it. And once the server is nice and settled, you can close it up. If you need to take it out, there's little lifter tabs on each side that you can use to release the hooks. So they're actually really well designed. Uh, I like them. They're just kind of expensive. Uh, I think the set for this server was like 60 bucks plus shipping. Um, and honestly, you know, with these Dell servers, they're, they're a good deal on the front end, but you don't realize all the little things that start adding up, like getting a bezel, getting rails, 
Um, you know, if it, they've probably taken out the iDRAC Enterprise, if it only has one PSU and you need a second one, it can add up pretty quick. And uh, while at first I thought they were a lot cheaper than a lot of the other servers out there, I'm starting to find they're not necessarily cheaper. In some cases, they're even a little bit more expensive. So this is still was a good deal uh, overall. You know, I'm happy with my purchase, but something to keep in mind. Um, it's not just about the initial cost of the server. It's also about the cost of all the other things you're going to need to set it up in the way that you want it set up. So think about that when you're setting up your server or <clears throat> when you're purchasing your server. Let's talk for a second about how you want to set up the, the items in your rack so that you have them set up efficiently and you don't make your rack too top heavy. Um, one of the biggest dangers with a rack when you, especially a rolling rack, is that you put too many heavy items at the top and too many light items at the bottom and it becomes top heavy and tips. Um, honestly, that's probably what ended up happening to my rack that uh, I purchased, you know, used from some guy when it was all bent up. Um, you know, somebody put just one too many things in it uh, at the top or they had it evenly spaced and took out stuff at the bottom and tried to move it and it was just top heavy and it tipped over. Um, so with that in mind, generally speaking, the way that you'll see most racks set up is networking gear at the top because that's going to be the lightest stuff. And then below that, you'll have your servers um, down to where you start having like heavier stuff like storage because usually storage has a lot more disks. It's a lot heavier. Finally, at the bottom, you have things like UPSs, um, uninterruptible power supplies, uh, which are one of the heaviest things in a rack. So what we're going to be doing right now, since we're only putting three things in there, the Cisco switch will be going to the top of the rack as a piece of networking gear with, of course, the ports at the back because A, it's Cisco, and B, that's the right way to do it. So putting the Cisco switch in the rack is really simple. You simply put those two short rails at the back of the rack uh, at the height you want, um, and then slide the switch in. Uh, so that it is going into those rails and uh, put the um, <clears throat> and screw in the front of the uh, rack gears into the rack rails. So I'm doing that right at the top of my rack. Um, next, I'll be putting in the Dell server. Um, that's going to go basically right in the middle. Uh, to, since it's probably the heaviest thing in the rack, I want to get it lower down. Um, also, you know, I know I'm going to be getting some more rack mount servers eventually. Uh, and I want to leave room between the switch and the rack for them. Uh, I'll probably also be getting into some additional networking gear uh, once I can uh, have the time and resources to get my house wired up for CAS6. Um, so this guy will be going in the middle of the rack. Um, it's really simple again, like we explained with the ready rails, you just clip them, clip them into place on the rack rails, uh, pull out the inner rails until they lock, set the server down into the rails, and then release those uh, tab so that the inner rails can slide back in. On the front of the Dell server, you've got uh, actually captive screws underneath the front little tabs to lock it into place in the ready rails if you really want to. Um, since I, I'm not, I would do that if you're worried about it sliding out at any point, but uh, you don't necessarily need to do that. Finally, I've got my steel shelf. That's just going to go kind of towards the bottom. I'll probably leave about eight to twelve U's at the bottom, at the very bottom of the rack, so that I can put some UPSs in there. Eventually, I do want to get two UPSs and stick them in there, and uh, so, <clears throat> so I'm going to leave myself plenty of room to do that, but that's going to go down at the very bottom so that I can put that tower server on the shelf in the rack and get it away from uh, my workstation and clear up all the wiring over there. Um, of course, I've got a lot of small networking gear, too, that's going to go up near the top. Um, you know, it's probably just going to sit on top of the Cisco switch at this point. Uh, ideally, you probably want to actually have a shelf but uh, I don't think it's gonna have any negative effect to sit on the top of that Cisco switch since it's literally just a little Motorola modem and a very small Wi-Fi router. So the final thing that I'm gonna need to do is to actually reroute all of the wiring that I have coming over to my PC to the corner of my basement that I'm sticking my rack in. Um, I've got uh, a piece of uh, ethernet cable that's going to my home theater PC upstairs I need to move over as well as the coax that's providing uh, the modem's signal to the outside world and power. I do have a, uh, a power outlet kind of near that corner of the basement, but uh, I'm going to have to probably run a small extension cord until such time as I actually build a proper server closet and get power run out there professionally. Once all your heavy equipment is in place and installed, you can start running cabling. Um, some things to keep in mind is that if, when you're running cabling to your servers that are on rails, make sure you leave enough slack so that you can actually pull the server all the way out. Um, if you just, you know, make everything very tight at the back, you're going to have to unplug the server to, to pull it out, uh, which kind of defeats the purpose of putting it on rails. Um, you know, I have some Velcro that I'm using to uh, attach to the sides of the rack in the back 
keeping everything nice and neat and tidy so I can get into the back of the rack. Um, and, uh, you know, I just have a basic power strip that I'm kind of jury rigging in there to work as my power distribution unit. Uh, long term, again, I'm getting some uh, some UPSs and I really want to get uh, a meter uh, power strip so that I can see how much wattage each device is using individually. But that is another project for another day. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. It's really nice to get my basement cleaned up and get all that stuff out of the way so that I can actually walk and not have to worry about kids tripping over servers, which is no fun. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, uh, throw a like on it. Uh, also, if you'd like more content like this in the future, you can subscribe for that. If you have any questions or if anything wasn't clear, you can leave comments in the comment section down below. Love interacting with y'all guys, and I'd love to help you out with your project if you have any questions. If you'd like to support what I'm doing on this channel, you can do so by using the Amazon affiliate link in the description section down below. I really appreciate it when y'all do that. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.